Okay, so I've got these two packages today. Um, they both should be eBay packages. This one feels really light and airy. Um, and when you kind of tip it around, you can feel that there's only something small inside it. Um, but let's uh, let's open them both up. Okay, um, I was expecting this to be the the Alexander Star and the uh, Freebie Darth Maul 2x2, but it's actually the Bronco. So this puzzle is similar to the uh, the Worm puzzle, and it looks, you know, looking at it in real life, it looks way smaller than how it looks in the pictures and and videos online. It actually, it actually felt as though when I was moving this box around it actually felt as though this box inside was way smaller so I'm quite surprised by the size of this box and that'll be the invoice Ah, cool. Wasn't expecting this. I've completely forgotten about these puzzles um, that were being sent to me. Awesome. So we've got a brain ball. Wow, all these, all these puzzles they look way smaller, way, way smaller than how they look online. Um, Rubik's rings. And a Rubik's clock. Awesome. Right, okay. <clears throat> so, this actually doesn't come from eBay. I'll explain where they come from in a while when I actually show them. Um, let's take a look at this first. So this is a Bronco puzzle by Recent Toys, age 6 to 99, that's unusual, I've never seen that before. Um, difficulty, one and a half stars out of one, two, three, four, five stars, one player. Nice packaging, nice uh, presentation. Start here, get there. IQ focus, fine motor logic, spatial reasoning. Um, get started in three simple steps. Rock the horse back and forth to see which holes his feet his feet fit into. Um, so I guess it's a bit of a bucking bronco. Um, some holes will allow him to spin and change direction. Solve the puzzle by finding the path that completely removes the horse from the maze. Inventor, Oscar van Deventer. Bronco is a product of recent size. Uh, 2015. Wow, so, I mean, this, this puzzle has been out for quite a few years now, um, but since it says 2015 on this, and, like, for a long time, I couldn't find them on eBay either, but recently I've seen quite a few of these on eBay. So, obviously, since it says... 2015 on the package, they must have uh, uh, recent times must have uh, re-released re this puzzle. So let's open it up.
thrown this package in it says all kind of different things thinker no tinker smart puzzle and um, brainer think solve hmm okay so I'll just unwrap these puzzles Okay, so here is the Bronco. Just make sure I'm in focus there. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, this is this seems to be a similar puzzle to the worm, an apple puzzle. This is also um, by Oscar. Um, with the worm and apple puzzle, you basically move the worm around these holes, and the object is to actually get the worm out of the apple. I did it easily then because I just, you know, I hadn't actually properly um, threaded the worm through, you know, lots of random different holes. Once you do that, it is quite difficult to uh, to get the worm out. But the yeah, the object of this puzzle is to get the worm out of the apple. Um, the object of this puzzle is to get the horse, the little horse, out of the um, horseshoe, I suppose. And this bad this by the way is a really fun puzzle. So let's just kind of move these out of the way. So I'll give you a close look at this. So as you can see the puzzle is in the shape of a horseshoe and it says Bronco there. Really nice looking puzzle. Um, looks like a high quality puzzle and plastic, the red transparent plastic, it looks really nice um, these bits, the textured um, there's the horse itself So you basically um, just kind of swivel the horse around. Some of these holes, um, the horse won't fit into. I mean, it's it's back the back part of the horse. It won't fit into this hole. So I'm guessing the front part must fit through it. Otherwise, I guess there wouldn't be much point in the hole being there. Um, but yeah, you know, so you can you can turn him and. You rock him back and forth through different holes and stuff. Um, and the object is to get the horse onto this bit, and then you can pull him. You can free him from the uh, from the puzzle. So uh, let's take a look at these puzzles. These three. Now uh, these come all the way um, from Spain. These are from a, a, a Twisted Puzzles forum member. Um, he was selling a bunch of puzzles on eBay. He was selling like different lots, and um, I said to him, "There's there's three puzzles that you're selling that I'm interested in." Unfortunately, though, he was kind of selling them separately. Like this clock, he was selling it in a lot with uh, with other puzzles that I weren't that interested interested in. Um, same goes for this and for this. Um, so the price I would have paid for, to get all these three puzzles would have been a lot of money because I'll, I'll be having to buy three three lots do you know what I mean that I was selling um, so I said is, is there any chance that you could just sell these three puzzles separately to me and could you give me a price and how much the postage would be and he said yeah sure um, so these three puzzles that I've bought from him have ended up being um, a lot cheaper than how much it would have I think than how much it would have cost for even just one lot, um, the, you know, including the postage, these these three puzzles have worked out at around five pounds each, which I think is just phenomenal. Because these uh, these clocks usually they go for about ten pounds on eBay, I think. Um, and this looks in 
brand new condition. I'm really surprised. In fact, they all look like new. Um, this this is very rare. Uh, you rarely see these on eBay. Um, I'm not sure how much these go for when they do sell on eBay, but I'm thinking probably at the very least ten pounds. Um, and these brain balls, these are really rare as well. Um, I can't really see it going for any less than ten pounds on eBay. So at the very least, I think these three puzzles on eBay. Uh, would go for about ten pounds each. That's like thirty pounds altogether. But um, I only paid about how much was it? I think it was about twenty-five pounds included, including the postage for these three puzzles. Um, and they're all in in like new condition. So I think uh, I think I've got myself some really great bargains. So let's take a look at this Rubik's clock first. Uh, something Rubik's was it Erno or something? I don't know. Rubik's clock. What does that say? Rubik's clock is a trademark of, and this article is produced. Rubik's clock TM is a trademark of, and this article is produced under license from Seven Sounds Limited. Um, Matchbox 1988 Rubik made in China. So this is from 1988. And it just. <laughs> well, apart from that blemish there, it looks as though it's just come out of the factory. Really. Really nice condition. Um, don't, I don't really know exactly how these work. I don't really know what the pins are for. Um, if you turn these things at the side. It turns the clocks, you see, so... Um, I'm not really sure how you... how you mix the clocks up. Um, I'm sure you can get them all mixed up so they're all pointing in different directions, but obviously, to solve it, they all need to point, be pointing in the same direction at 12. I'm pretty sure of that. Same on the back as well. Oh, now look, now only some of them have turned. That's interesting. Hmm, cool. These pins... Uh, I don't know what they do. But yeah, supposedly... Um, this, the Rubik's clocks are the best clocks that are available. Um, some other companies do make these. Um, I think Cube Twist makes them. Um, I can't remember what other what the other companies are, but basically, you know, the uh, Chinese companies that make uh, cubes, and supposedly um, those clocks aren't that great. Like the pins break on them and come loose and, and whatever. So supposedly the Rubik's clocks are the best clocks. So that's why I've ended up getting a Rubik's clock. So I've wanted a clock for quite a long time now. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if I want to scramble this yet. Um, I want to try and figure out how it works, and I think I'll probably be able to do that more easily if it's not all kind of messed up and stuff. Although it's kind of a bit messed up now, I suppose. <laughs> Rubik's rings. Not sure how similar this is going to be to the Hungarian rings. That's interesting. I've never seen the other side of a Rubik's rings before. So it's, I guess it I guess it's kind of like a 3D version of the Hungarian rings. Um, You've got blue balls, yellow balls, and red balls there. Um, I was going to say these rings turn a lot more easily than the rings do on the Hungarian rings, but it, it, you know this ring it was very stuck a few seconds ago, but now it's actually moving very freely. Um, 
Um, not really sure what else to say, so um, I will scramble this up, but I'll show this puzzle first before I do that. So this is a brain ball. I think these are probably pretty damn rare, I mean, um, for the last couple of years I've been trying to find one and I've not been able to find one anywhere. So as you can see this is Bosch. And I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, um, a company that makes spark plugs. It looks like some kind of German writing there. So we've got numbers on this side going from 1 uh, to 13. So you've got black numbers on white backgrounds, and on the other side you've got black numbers going from 1 to 13 on uh, on yellow backgrounds. So I think maybe, can you turn this ring? And I know you can turn it this way. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm probably looking quite stupid now, but, I, you know, um, you've got to remember I've never... Never ever used one of these puzzles before. Um, okay. So now we've got some of it turning. That's interesting. We've got one, two, three, four pieces turning on the bottom, but only three pieces turning at the top. Um, I'm sure this ring should actually be able to turn as well. I think. Otherwise, how on earth would you mix it up? Um. You know something, I've got absolutely no idea. I don't want to put too much force onto it because it feels like I might break it. But Okay, I'm going to try and figure this out and then I'll come back. Okay, so I was messing around with this for, for about, what, 15 seconds and I discovered that this ring does actually turn. It's just extremely stiff. Um, you've got to put a lot of force to get it to move. Um, it kind of, it kind of feels as though it just needs to break in, as though this has never really been used or something. But I could be wrong. Um, let's see, it's like turn, turning it clockwise. It's a lot more difficult than turning it anti-clockwise. Yeah, and I've just figured out as well why when you turn let's try and turn it. I think I need to get things properly aligned. See, because of this slight thin layer going around, because I've got to put so much force onto turning it this way or to turning it that way, um, I'm worried about breaking it. It kind of feels as though it could be quite delicate. Yeah, I've worked out why when you turn it, why four of these turn with it and only three of those turn with it is because this this circle bit on the ball that moves it's actually more smaller than this bit if you know what I mean So um yeah let's uh, scramble this up. If I can do. Man, you you really do have to put some force into this to get it to turn. Scrambling this fully could take a while. I'm not complaining, I'm just 
just saying really yeah I'm probably I probably won't scramble this up fully on camera because it's you know it's just gonna take way way too long god damn it Jesus Christ I can't I can barely turn it Um, this isn't really mixing up much, is it? Hmm, okay. Turn, you bitch. Okay, I've been trying for absolutely ages to scramble this, and I'm just not really getting anywhere, because it's so, it's so difficult to turn this ring. Um, maybe it does need to break in. Um, maybe it will benefit from some lube. Uh, I guess if I tried spraying some lube underneath, you know, these bits underneath this rim, going around the ball, maybe that will help. Um, I've noticed that the edges of this ring are textured as well. Um, there's a a similar puzzle to this called um, a satin puzzle. Um, it's hard to explain exactly how it looks, but the reason why it's called, I think it kind of moves a bit differently. Um, but the reason why it's called a satin puzzle is because it, you know, it looks like satin. You've got a ball and then you've got rings, a ring going around it. Um, so yeah, so um, I'm not really going to try and scramble this anymore just now because it's just so damn difficult. Um, I'll scram I'll, as I said, I'm not going to scramble that yet, but I'll scramble this. I can do it with just my thumb, I don't need to use both thumbs. Uh, most of the time this turns really well. Most of the time. There we go. Um, I guess that'll do. I'm sure, it could get a bit more scrambled than that, but I'll just leave it there. Um, yeah, there doesn't seem to be any videos at all on YouTube of of the the brain ball puzzle. There's one video of the Saturn puzzle, at least. Um, but uh, yeah, th this particular puzzle is called a, a brain ball, and um, there doesn't seem to be any videos at all of it on YouTube. So today I got this Bronco puzzle. Um, came from a seller on eBay from within the UK. Um, a brain ball, very, very rare. Rubik's rings, pretty damn rare. Rubik's clock, not rare at all. You can, you know, there's always loads of these for sale on eBay. Um, this is obviously in mint condition because it was it came to me brand new in the box. Um, these are all pretty much in mint condition. You know they all still look, look like brand new. Um, this clock is from 1988. Um, you know looks like brand new, except for that scuff there. Um, not sure what year the ring the Rubik's rings came out. Not sure what year this brain ball came out. Um, these three puzzles, these came from a seller in Spain. He was a member of the uh, the Twisted Puzzles forum. I can't remember what his name is. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I've just noticed 
after making the video, um, when I looked at this closely, I noticed that there's like a cog where these balls are. Now I never noticed this while I was making the video because I was looking at this puzzle through the viewfinder. Um, let's see if I can zoom in anymore. Um, I'll try and shine this light on it so you can see better. Yeah, there's like a, a white kind of cog and the, the balls sit between the uh, the teeth that's kind of strange I don't really I, gu I guess I guess the cog is there to make them turn better or whatever but I can't really see why it would make them turn better to be honest it kind of seems as though if, if the cog wasn't there then the balls would actually be more free to move maybe I don't know maybe I don't know what I'm talking about but yeah, just, a, just an interesting thing that I noticed um, after making the video.